have my slides. Good morning. Good morning. I like to walk around and use my hands, so I'm just going to use the mic here, and I'm going to advance the slides. But I am so honored to be here amongst these giants in NPN field giants in medicine and i'm so honored that you all are advocates for your care you're here you're doing everything you can to promote your own wellness and that's what we're going to be talking about today is what can you do next slide please how many of you feel this way in our medical system <laughs> raise your hands it's topsy it's turvy you're holding on for dear life. You don't know where the next turn is coming. And so I'd like to say, next slide, that perhaps there's another way. And perhaps there are tools in your tool belt that we can give you to make you feel empowered, to make you feel that you are now in the driver's seat, that you now have something that you can do yourself to promote your own wellness. And I'd like to, to say that that perhaps is via integrative oncology. And this is a new term. This is a new specialty that's emerging in our culture. We have many different integrative oncology centers and academic centers now. We have one here at Mayo, University of Arizona, Memorial Sloan Kettering, MD Anderson, the list goes on and on. And I'm curious how many of you have heard of this specialty before? integrative oncology. So not that many, but there were hands. So let me define it. What is integrative oncology? Next slide, please. We have a society, the Society of Integrative Oncology, and they got together and they said, okay, we have this robust field of medicine that's growing. We, let's define it. And so let me read this to you. Integrative oncology is a patient-centered, evidence-informed field of cancer care. It utilizes mind-body practices, natural products, and, and I like to omit the or because it's really and, lifestyle modifications from different traditions, and I love that, using all the ancient traditions around the world. And it's alongside, and this is truly what defines integrative oncology, and it is in contrast to complementary medicine. And you'll notice I did change the name of the talk. It's really integrative approach to NPNs because it's alongside conventional cancer treatments. Integrative oncology aims to optimize health, quality of life, and clinical outcomes across the cancer care continuum to empower, and again, this is where you get to be the driver of the bus. This is where you get to contribute to your own wellness, to prevent cancer and to become active participants before, during, and beyond. Next slide, please. So I have the luxury, I'm a hematologist. I do bone marrow transplant, but I have the luxury to have a half day of clinic every week where I get to just do this. And what we do during these consultations is to talk about what are these different domains of health and wellness. And I like to call them the four pillars of health and wellness. The first clearly is body. How do we care for the body? Lifestyle medicine, so, so key. How do we care for the mind? How do we really decrease our stress burden? We'll talk a lot more about that. How do we promote meaning, connection, and how do we promote happiness and joy? Why are we treating our cancer, right? It's to live our lives, to have those moments of profound joy and meaning and connection. And then notice that it's all anchored, anchored on this, really this basis of conventional medicine, right? There is no pillar that is not touching that. And it's speckled around with all of these complementary modalities, and that's why they're complementary, right? They complement all of these major pillars, but they, as a standalone, are not robust enough. Okay, next slide, please. Why, why, why is this so important? Well, we talked a lot yesterday, and there was a fantastic question about, what about inflammation? Why are we talking about inflammation? Isn't this important? Well, yes. 
I would like to say it is important and that is one of the main things we try to accomplish with integrative oncology and wellness methods. We want to decrease your MPN symptom burden and this was beautifully described by Ruben Mesa, the Quality of Life Working Group. We now have validated tools to assess this. It is now part of our NCCN guidelines. This is our gospel in cancer care where we change therapeutic decisions based on your symptoms alone. It's not just the blood counts anymore. It's also the symptom burden. And how beautiful would it be if, if rather than changing from ruxolitinib to fedratinib or procritinib or pegasus, that you're using lifestyle modifications to impact your symptom burden. Decreasing cardiovascular risk factors. My goodness, we all know thrombotic risk is what we are trying to avoid in ETPV, right? That is what takes lives. And how do we, if you were a cardiologist, what would you be telling your patients? Lifestyle modification, stress reduction, mindfulness, meditation, smoking cessation, weight reduction, decreasing obesity, all of that is cardiovascular risk reduction. So, so important for all of you. We also know you all want this. Lots of survey-based analysis, all different types of cancer, but also in NPNs. Many of you are already utilizing these modalities. So how do we really do that in a really safe and mindful way, in a very communicative way? And I, I'd like to highlight that too later. We want to impact your outcomes. We want to reduce your toxicities, right? We have beautiful therapeutics. They're growing, our armamentarium is expanding, but they are all associated, unfortunately, with some sort of side effects. So how do we really modulate some of those side effects? And we want to decrease cost of care, decrease hospitalizations, decrease healthcare utilization. Next slide, please. So again, let's just highlight, what are the treatment goals? What are we trying to do together when we meet in clinic? Treatment goal number one, we want to treat your MPN disease, right? We want to really get that hematologic remission. We want to get that molecular remission, maybe with interferon. Shout out to Collegian and Dr. Silver. Absolutely, we have now disease modifying therapeutics. And so it's very exciting, but we also want to treat symptoms. And the counts alone, the molecular remission is not enough alone, so it's symptoms. But it's also cancer prevention, and we talked about that yesterday as well. We know there's an increased risk for other cancers for those that harbor the diagnosis of myeloproliferative neoplasms. And so how do we be really mindful about that and really focus on primary cancer prevention? And again, modulation of cardiovascular risk. And our goal together is long-term survival, right, with a high quality of life and to decrease inflammation. Next. So let's talk a little bit more about inflammation. This is Hanahan and Weinberg's. It's a very landmark article in 2011. And it talks about what makes a cancer cell a cancer cell. And these are all the different landmarks of the proliferative potential of cancer cells. And I'd like to call out tumor promoting inflammation. And what causes inflammation? Chronic infections obesity, smoking, alcohol, environmental pollutants. And what I like to highlight here too is this is all modifiable, right? These are choices we make. This is something that you can change and modify in this really complex milieu of the hallmarks of cancer. Next. We know that MPNs are truly associated with a high degree of inflammation. So many cytokines. It's a cytokine soup, a cytokine storm within you. Interleukins, tumor necrosis factor alpha, very high amount of inflammation in ET, PV, MF, and of certainly in the leukemia phases. It, very interestingly, if you correlate the level of inflammation, it actually correlates with levels of thrombosis and shorten leukemia-free survival. So it behooves us to say, wow, 
how do I modulate this inflammation? It's there. What do we do? What do we do about this? Next slide. How can you quiet the storm? How do you quiet this inflammation? Next. So it's really lifestyle medicine. I really see lifestyle medicine as the true backbone of integrative health. We know that diet, we know that exercise are potent modulators of inflammation. Next. Hippocrates said this, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And I love this picture because it's the rainbow. And with every color in your food, there's truly different phytonutrients. And the idea is to, to eat them all, and they're all synergistic together. And so I tell my patients in clinic, I'm like, eat the rainbow. Please eat the rainbow, but not the Skittles, folks. <laughs> it's not the rainbow I'm talking about. But the idea is, is to get this on your plate, every plate if you can, this color, this beautiful vibrancy in food, because that is truly medicine. And you probably have heard this comment of we eat with our eyes, and that is very true. So truly try to make and craft a beautiful, colorful plate. Next slide. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the Mediterranean diet because Dr. Fleischman from UC Irvine is going to speak as well later on this, but I can't highlight enough the power of how diet truly can impact our biochemistry, right? And this is one of the biggest studies ever done in diets and intervention. This is high-risk cardiovascular disease. It's called the PREDIMED study. And they asked folks to eat as many quartiles as you can of Mediterranean-based foods. And those that were eating the highest quartiles had the lowest risk of cardiovascular events and death. They also looked at rates of CRP and other for forms of inflammation, and it was modulated by higher quartiles of the Mediterranean diet. So food is medicine and can certainly change your biochemistry. Next slide. I'm not gonna go through this all in detail, but you should all be aware of the American Institute of Cancer Research, Cancer Prevention Guidelines. Google this, pull it up, put it on your refrigerator. These are words to live by on how to really be uh, making the steps that we know are uh, cancer prevention in nature. I love to call out sugar-sweetened drinks. Take that, as that's one thing you do, take that off your plate. And then the other thing I like to call out is it's not what you're removing, but it's what you're getting in. So focus on getting more color, more fruits and vegetables, more omega-3 fatty acids. If I had to pick two things out of that big chart, you'll have access to these slides as well. Next. Well, I'm biased because I'm from the University of Arizona. I'm trained by the Andrew Weil Center of Integrative Medicine. So I spend a lot of time on the Andrew Weil Center of Integrative Medicine, the anti-inflammatory food pyramid, which is truly Mediterranean at its core. But there's a few really interesting food as medicine tidbits, and I'll just share those with you. Asian mushrooms are really interesting. And I'm not talking about creminis or portobellos. It's really anything with the akis, so shiitake, maitakes. There's something in their cell wall, beta D glucan, that interacts with our immune system and promotes, in particular, natural killer cells and enhances the anti tumor response in some studies. It's also associated with improved quality of life. Again, food is medicine. I'm not always recommending that you go out and supplement, but eat your mushrooms, cook them. Increasing your omega-3 to 6 ratio, we'll talk more about that. So forophane, this is really interesting. This is the cruciferous family. And crucifers are broccoli, cauliflower, bok choy, arugula. Um, and so they have sephorophane, which is a very potent antioxidant. And we're actually studying this at the University of Arizona as a primary prevention for head and neck cancer in those that are smokers or have a smoking history. Green tea, EGCG, actually modulates some gene expression. It leads to demethylation, which is inhibition of our tumor promoter genes. I know a lot of kind of negative regulation, but changing the way our genes interact. Curcumin, soy, grapes, garlic also have a very similar kind of epigenetic effect. So really interesting food as medicine. Next slide, please. I can get really caught up in nutrition. It's really fun, I love to cook. And so I'm gonna stop there and talk about physical activity. 
physical activity also is medicine, and we give prescriptions and clinic on uh, really personalizing this. There's no one size fits all. There's very limited data in the hematologic population, and in particular, we wrote a paper on this in NPNs. But the key is that we know physical activity is medicine. We've seen this in large data cohorts. We've seen this in breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, et al. And so what is it within you that will get you moving, right? So think about that for a minute. What do you love to do? What can you do? Who could you engage to do it with you? And how do you do it safely? And how do you really communicate with your team? Communicate maybe with a the physical therapist and really engage in getting moving and recognizing that it improves your quality of life, symptom burden. I'll share with you a yoga trial soon. And um, again, improves outcomes. If, if we really want to prove this, we need to do this in a large scale in MPN patients. Uh, next slide, please. So we're in the Mayo ASU building, so we have to talk about this study. This was a study we did several years back, um, and we asked our MPN patients to participate in yoga. This was online yoga, Udaya, and they only did 40 minutes per week. It wasn't very much, less than 10 minutes per day, and there was a statistically significant reduction in their markers of inflammation in particular tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is we know, as you saw in a prior slide, one of the major inflammatory cytokines within NPNs. We also saw a small effect size, because this is a small group, for pain reduction, sleep improvement, and depression and anxiety. So yoga can be medicine, and I love yoga because it's movement, it's breath, and it's mindfulness. And so it's kind of all of those pillars in one activity. So we now have YouTube, right? So get online and maybe experiment with a little bit of even chair yoga. You can get benefits. Next slide. I also love Tai Chi and Qigong. And this is another kind of form of exercise, but it's also meditation, it's breath. Associated with the immune function, I'm studying in bone marrow transplant and multiple myeloma patients, and we're seeing uh, improvement in some of their infections, rates of infections and hospitalization. Great for balance. This is part of our elderly guidelines for decreasing falls, one of our most evidence-based guidelines in the elderly population. So this is medicine as well. Here's a resource for you, the healer within. If we had more time today, I would do an experiential with you. I'm a practitioner, and I love Love, love this book. There's a website here as well. Next slide. So we really focused here on lifestyle medicine. I'm going to move to our second pillar, which is truly stress reduction. Next slide. Next. We know, again, stress triggers inflammation, and this was a kind of a, a landmark time article talking about stress, and it's truly the secret killer of our American population and all of our population, really. Next slide. There was this beautiful review article, and it's, it's several years old now, but I, there's no article yet, I think, that has been published with the same level of eloquence, elegance. And so here it shows that with stress, right, what happens? You start pumping out chemicals norepinephrine, epinephrine, cortisol, and that goes into the bloodstream, and where does it go? And, uh, you know, this is for solid tumors, but also bone marrow microenvironments. What we see is that cells grow faster. They proliferate faster. They grow more blood vessels. We call that angiogenesis, and you can, you can stain for that with something called VEGF, and so there's enhanced VEGF staining in stressed animals. We see that the immune system is dampened, viruses are upregulated, the uh, DNA repair mechanisms are altered. So all of this is really from stress. And so how do we start quieting our stress? Because stress, recognizing stress and releasing it is good medicine, right? Next slide. So what if I told you you could change your inflammatory profile in only five minutes a day. How many of you would do it? <laughs> okay, remember you rose your hand. <laughs> Next slide. Meditation and mindfulness. 
We know, and this is evidence-based, and I just did a literature search, and it started back in the 80s, and it was like one, two papers a year. Last two years, there have been 25 pa papers, evidence-based papers, primary research in meditation and cancer. So this is really a robust body of literature, and we see that it impacts pain, depression, cancer-related symptoms, weight control, overall quality of life, inflammatory markers, and even your brain anatomy. Next slide. So these are functional MRI scans of folks that are meditating. And in the non-meditators are just beginning to meditate. So much of the activity is in the primal brain, the center of the brain, the, the thalamus. And what we know, that's really our reptilian brain. That's kind of our fight and our flight response, right? That's our stress response. And with very small amount of meditation, it starts to remap. The whole neuroanatomy changes, and it becomes really expanded out into the cortex. There's more gray matter, which is associated with higher level functions, reasoning, cognitive ability. And so, again, this is Fantastic, five minutes a day, we're changing all of these things. Next slide, please. So where do we begin? And I honestly have, there's no clock in here. I have no idea where I am on time. But I promised Dr. Silver actually at dinner last night, he's like, I don't know how to meditate. I, I'm frustrated, I've tried this doesn't really resonate with me. And we talked about, well, maybe it's not sitting down meditation. Perhaps it's moving meditation, yoga, tai chi, and that is meditation. But I'd like to do three minutes, and I'm probably going to go over time. <laughs> but let's do three minutes of just an experiential of what is meditation. So go ahead and put your legs anchored on the floor, relaxing your shoulders, and closing your eyes. And just begin following the rhythm of your breath, in and out. And just becoming aware. There's no judgment, and that's meditation rule number one, is there's never any judgment in your experience of meditation. You're just being present. You're being there. So focusing on breath in and out, and you're noticing how does your body feel? How do your feet feel on the floor? The weight of your seat? Your shoulders? Noticing the rise and the fall of your chest? And you'll start to notice sounds as well. Creaks of chairs. breath. Maybe you notice some smells, tastes, maybe coffee in the morning. And of course, thoughts come in. Thoughts inevitably float in. And that's okay. We don't judge those thoughts. We just allow them. We name them. Say thinking, planning, ruminating, Whatever it is, it's okay. And you just name it and let it go and return to breath. And take another deep breath in and out. And opening your eyes. So that's just a, a snapshot of how easy meditation can be. It's only five minutes and you can do it anywhere, and it's just being aware, and there's no wrong way. I think we have this vision of meditation where I must be in complete blankness and have no thoughts, but that's not what it is. It's just being where you are and recognizing and naming it. Next slide, please. Here's some more resources for you. Mindfulness-based stress reduction is probably the most evidence-based uh, mind-body therapy we have in medicine. John Kabat-Zinn is the father of that, so I encourage you to experience that, to explore that, and maybe even sign up for a course. Next slide. 
meaning and connection. And it's actually in our NCC and guidelines, again, I keep mentioning that, about supportive care. And what we know is that those that have a strong base in spirituality or connection, sometimes that's nature, it's different for each and every one of us, do better, improve quality of life, decrease anxiety, depression, and better cancer outcomes. And so I assign patients in clinic 10 minutes a day. Do something that nurtures this. How do you connect with something outside of yourself? And how are you nurturing that aspect of yourself? Next slide. And there's this whole body of literature now from, called post-traumatic growth. And so this can be interesting as we're trying to really make sense of new diagnoses, to really focus in on this concept of, well, you know, how has my life changed after my diagnosis? And are there some positive aspects that perhaps I can anchor to? How have my relationships changed? New possibilities? personal strength, spiritual change, and a new appreciation for life. And so you can reflect and, and see if any of that applies to you. Next slide. Joy. This is a really fun pillar, but I will tell you, in clinic, this often brings tears to patients' eyes when we first start talking about it. Because what we identified as joy in the past has changed so much with a diagnosis, within COVID, with aging, all of these things, and joy has changed and transformed and is almost unrecognizable. So we spend time, and I encourage you to do this, is saying, what is joyful for you now, in your experience now? Create that list, expand that list, and have focused practice to enhance it. Two practices I recommend. Number one is a daily joyful intention. Name your joyful activity, do it, and then reflect back and have gratitude every single day for at least 10 minutes per day. And then the, the other one is gratitude. And gratitude is, is a powerful, powerful anecdote for depression and increases quality of life. There's an app out there called Three Good Things. You name three things you're grateful for every day, and after 10 weeks, you have higher happiness scores. So a gratitude practice is really powerful. Next slide. OK, so we've done body, mind, meaning, joy, the four pillars. Now we're going to delve into complementary. And John, can you tell me how about how many minutes I have? About five. Five minutes. OK, this is going to be quick. Next slide. Tons of complementary modalities out there. It really, it's, it's up to you to resonate with it. See, what do I think is going to be my best medicine? And really undertake that in an evidence-based fashion. Next slide. Acupuncture is my favorite complementary modality. And I, I personally do acupuncture very frequently. Lots of evidence for this. It's safe and effective. Best data for pain and nausea can be effective for fatigue, sleep, smoking, cessation. Really a powerful modality. And um, this was an NCI Institute really kind of coming together, looking at the guidelines for cancer patients. So um, I would encourage acupuncture as uh, a supportive care modality. Next. We have pain guidelines. We all have pain. Chronic pain is really an epidemic in our nation and around the world. And so the Society of Integrative Oncology has partnered with ASCO, which is really the American Society of Clinical Oncology, to develop these guidelines of how do you best support uh, your pain management. Next slide. Acupuncture again, yoga, guided imagery, hypnosis, reflexology, and massage. So. Remember that there are other things to really layer on to the pain management program and include some of these modalities. Next slide. Botanical medicine. This is really a, a deep topic. We could spend literally a three-day symposia on botanical medicine. I give you some resources. Natural Medicine's database, Memorial Sloan Kettering have wonderful um, apps and websites that you can put your therapies in, put your interested supplements in, and check for drug interactions. Really, really important. Next slide. 
but there's some issues with botanicals. And so I love food as medicine. I, that's why I love this capsule, stuffed with food. So be aware that you really need to be checking with your provider, having a really multidisciplinary discussion around the safety around botanicals before you take them. And if you do take them, look for these stamps of approval, USP, Consumer Laboratories, NSF, these are all stamps of approval, so be sure it's a high quality supplement. Next slide. Lots of natural products uh, that actually have JAK stat pathway inhibition. Things I like to call out, resveratrol, am I telling you to go and drink lots of red wine? No. <laughs> EGCG, green tea. Um, curcumin, and so, you know, just highlighting the point that food is medicine, and certainly you can eat your medicine, and look at how these compounds are very similar to our first JAK inhibitor, ruxolitinib. Next slide. I'm going to go past a couple of slides here because we are running out of time, but curcumin has a lot of interesting products. Next slide. It's good for pain, pain management. Again, do it a very mindful, safe way with your practitioner. Next. Omega-3s. Omega-3s is one of the supplements that I do often recommend. It modulates inflammation potently. Uh, but we do have to be careful. It can be uh, interact with anticoagulants, increase your risk of bleeding, so we must be mindful. You can eat your omega-3s. Omega-3s are found in fatty fish, well-caught salmon I love. Uh, certainly there are plant-based sources, things like chia seed, flax seed, walnuts, um, but omega-3 and inflammation is a very potent food as medicine. Next slide. Next slide. We did a study really international, 52 different countries, and we asked them what were their integrative modalities? What were they doing? Next slide. Again, lots of different interventions. I know all of you are already doing much of these things, but what I wanna highlight is that 20% reported not disclosing supplement use to their physician. So please, 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 if you are using supplements, talk with your physician. And if you don't feel comfortable, find another educated physician. There are naturopathic physicians that have education in oncology. They're called FABNOS. That's a good resource. But always be disclosing to your primary care physician and your hematologist what exactly you're doing for supplements and really all of your integrative modalities. Next slide. So I'd like to end on this concept of nurturing your garden, right? We all have a garden. And perhaps weeds pop up here and there, right? MPN <laughs> pop, and we use our jack inhibitors and perhaps interferons and transplant, and we're, we're trying to obliterate the weeds. But what about the garden? What about the soil? And that's really what integrative oncology aims to nurture, is to really, to really nurture that soil that is you. Next slide. So before we end, please, I see many of you have your notebooks. I would love it if you would just write three wellness goals that you have for yourself. What would you like to do differently in your life? What resonated with you today? And then, how are you going to hold yourself accountable to some of these goals? We're all excited at the end of a lecture and a conference, and I'm like, I'm going to go home and I'm going to do it. And then two weeks later, that steam kind of fizzles, and you kind of forgot all about it. So, you know, how are you? Maybe it's a reminder on your smartphone right now. Every two weeks, bing, what am I doing for wellness? How am I nurturing my four pillars? Next slide. We do have a free tool from the University of Arizona called My Wellness Coach, and maybe that's something that you could utilize. Many other strategies and tools out there, um, and this is uh, just one. I, I actually did a pilot using this in my proliferative neoplasm patients, and there, it was associated with some symptom reduction. So uh, this is the most evidence-based app for you right now. Next slide. So take home points, discuss your treatment plan with your providers, please, please. Eat intentionally, beautifully, mindfully. Move often, breathe, manage stress, and cultivate joy. Next slide. 
Thank you so much to the MPN Quality of Life Study Group. We've made so many strides and symptom uh, burden description, validation of tools, and support of non-pharmacologic ways to improve quality of life. And final slide. Next slide. That's okay. It's just thank you and a 